Good morning. I just woke up. Um, hope you had a good night's sleep too. And welcome to today's exciting episode. Let's get up. It's, um, it's much warmer at night now. I don't need my heater or my electric blanket on at all. I've got all these lovely blankets keeping me nice and warm. Put the light on so we can see what we're doing. So yeah. Uh, life in the house is nice these days. So, let's have a look at the bedroom. It's all very cosy. We've got like lots of hangers waiting for clothes to be put in them. Lots of bags full of clothes waiting to be put in hangers. Um, let's open the curtains, shall we? So we'll put this here. I've got my uh, got my window with a. I'm just gonna put some just gonna put some shorts on so you don't have to look at my underpants to bottom. Alright, so I've got this lovely little piece of rope which I tie around my curtain and then thusly drawing it through the loop on one end. And it's a kind of a canvas rope, so it um, kind of grips itself. And then give a little tap from there. Curtain open. See? Yeah, it's a nice sunny day out there. And then next we, what we do right there. Give our hair a little brush. Gets a little knotted in the night time. I like to kind of keep on top of it, stop rats' nests developing. More on rodents soon. Um, so yeah, get a little brushy. Gather it up to a majestic ponytail. Look at all this hair. I know. It's been a while since uh, I've had a haircut, but you know. Two, and then the final one. Give ourselves a little thingy. There we go. Now we're all set for the for the next um, stage of proceedings in the morning, which is to exit the bedroom. And we enter the living room. The living room's evolved somewhat since I had you over last. Not too much. Hasn't been too many major changes. I ended up setting up all my uh, music playing stuff here. This is a lovely bust uh, given to me by my friend Liz. She found it on the side of the road. And when she moved to Nashville, I said, what are you doing with that? She said, you can have it if you want. And I said, yes, I want it. So that's mine now, or I'm the caretaker of it until the next owner. This little lady and her baby were left in the house. This door was retrieved from um, that pile of rubbish across the road. Um, this is a sawhorse that I made using these brackets you can buy, very cheap. Um, that piece of perspex, like plexiglass that the speakers and laptop are sitting on is from an old bank that's also salvaged, salvaged bricks. And then to kind of give me some speaker isolation, I've uh, used chucks, chucks uh, scourers and sponges between some of the bricks to give it a little, little cushion. And that's about it for the new things in here. It's been a while. Um, so um, I'm just it's my lovely cup. Thanks, Gabby and Liam, for the lovely uh, gift. Drink my coffee out of it every morning. Um, yeah, look, I didn't just wake up. I've already had breakfast. Here's my bowl. Um, it's a bit of a deception there. But, you know, don't let the truth get in the way of a uh, good good movie, you know. Actually, um, I'll take these one hand. I'll take you through the, through the things up here since we're here. So, 
I've given everything like a nice big tidy. Everything's nice and tidy, um, more or less. The biggest development is here in the bathroom. You can see my shower pan. So this is the pan liner. So this is like the last line of defense against water. So this liner here, it's going to get filled with mortar. It's going to be like a nice mortar bed that goes in there. Nice um, and not level. It'll have like a fall towards the drain, but nice consistent fall. It'll be level around the outside and then it'll fall towards the drain. And then that's the substrate that the tile will then be set upon. Um, what else have I got? I got this little guy. So this is a shower mixing valve here. So this, I put you there. So this shower mixing valve, uh, which way that goes like that. So that's going to go here like this. And then the cement sheets are going to go around it. There'll be a hole cut out for those, for that, in those for this. And then whatever furniture goes on here to control the shower will then get affixed to that. Pipes will come in, hot water here, cold water here. This pipe will go up to the shower head, which will come out and squirt um, water on me. And I have showers, or anyone else who's having showers here. Showers for everybody, I say. Yeah. Uh, bathroom's coming along nicely. So this is, this is pretty good. I, this is, isn't fitted as light, as well as I would like. See how it's a little bit like a bit bubbly. I think it's, that's going to end up like squishing down, but I'm going to unpick these staples and just like wrap that a little bit more tightly. I think, I don't know. It's, it could be okay. I've never done one of these before. So the important things are the integrity of the pan liner. Make sure it's not pierced at any point inside the shower pan. These staples here are fine. Um, if water is getting through all of the layers that are going to go on top of this and make it to those staples, you've got um, bigger problems. So that's okay. So yeah, um, I've run my, I've got my water lines coming up, but these need to be three quarter inch, not half inch. So I need to pull those back out, drill bigger holes, redo those, but that's okay. They, they were really quick and I know the path that they take now. Um, all of this electrical and um, plumbing stuff is just figuring out the path that your wires and your pipes going to take. I've I actually landed this circuit on the breaker downstairs so that I could um, now have light in here, so I can work at night time. That's one of the one of the best things um, that's happened recently is that the warm nights or warm er nights, I can now work work, work comfortably. Um, on things around the house so it's prompted me to um, get a few more electrical circuits in place so I can wire up lights I've got another one here so this is this is the beginning of my dining room circuit which comes up out of the floor here and that was great fun I uh, dropped a little string with a screw attached to it down through the house it finally came out in the basement I had to guide it through and then um, attach the string to my electrical wire and then wrapped it so it's all ni nice and clean so it wouldn't get snagged on things and then pulled it back up through the holes and then ended up here. So it comes up through that hole, lands in this switch box. So this is like the first, um, first box. These are live, but it's all insulated and fine. Um, so this will eventually be where the light switch for the dining room is going to go. Um, at the moment, I'm just using it as like a junction box. So then it goes into, so this is the home run. Then this wire goes onto the next circuit. So it goes up, across, through the holes, zzz, electricity going through the wire, down, down there, and then into that outlet. So that's my first outlet in the dining room and then from there it's going to like go I'm going to have outlets going along under the window then I'll have another one there in the corner and then it'll go 
up and over. I'm not sure where we're going to go from here. I need to basically get an outlet into this wall. I'm just going to have one in the middle of the wall, I think. Or whatever goes there. Um, meant to have an outlet every 12 feet. So, figure that out. Um, so the next will be wiring up the kitchen, which is going to be fun. And the kitchen's coming along too. I'm almost at the stage where I can start framing up the kitchen island, which I need to do before I can start putting the drains and water lines and a lot of the electrical, because this kitchen island is going to have its own electrical. Um, and the plumbing is going to be kind of built into it because it's going to host the sink. So I need to frame that up. I need to get my little half wall in before I can... Um, before I can do that stuff. And that's about it. Um, let's, let's go downstairs. Let's have a look at the basement. Not a whole lot's changed down there, but there's been little bits and bobs. It's definitely much more of a much more of a home now. Not just to me. Just a little hint. Um, that's my toilet. Installed bum gun. It's great. Um, bikes. Keep the old bikes there. But yeah, this is the kitchen. This is like kitchen evolution six. So now we've got all we need. We've got our instant pot full of delicious beans. We've got our rice cooker with a little bit of rice from the other night. Microwave, coffee pot kettle. Now we've got a coffee grinder. Coffee grinder. So I've had coffee every morning and it's been a real luxury and I'm full of beans. I wake up, I wasn't addicted to coffee. Like I didn't have heinous withdrawals. I hear people having just awful headaches when they go cold turkey off coffee. When I moved in here, I'd essentially gone cold turkey off coffee and all I noticed was that I was a lot slower in the morning and I would I wouldn't really get going until like 11 and then once I'm up to speed I'm good but now I've got coffee I bounce out of bed because I've got delicious coffee waiting for me down here and I'm like mm, give me the coffee and then I get downstairs and I drink a cup of coffee after my breakfast apparently drinking coffee before you've had food is bad so I try and have a little little food have my oatmeal then yeah, drink my coffee and then bing, I'm good to go half an hour later. So it's good for the productivity, um, for sure. So countertop. So I've got a lot, more, a lot more space. I mean, I still need to like get rid of some of this clutter. But I keep all my dishes down here now because I've got a shelf. Look at this shelf. Ooh, so big. It's a nice deep shelf too. See how deep the shelf is, holds, holds a good number of items. And so now I've got that shelf up there, it does a couple of things, holds heaps of stuff obviously. Also, um, it shelters the counter space below from like the occasional rain of dust, which still occurs. I mean, it's a basement in a hundred plus year house. So this, you see, whenever there's any banging or anything going on upstairs or even just like a lot of walking around on this floor above, there's little sprinkles sometimes of dust, and I've noticed um, it's actually pretty good. Like, you, I, the way I monitor the dust is I check this uh, shiny surface on top of my Instant Pot, and we're looking good at the moment. Hasn't been much dust lately, which is great. But yeah, the shelf's awesome. Um, so, I, I've got a furry friend, like a little, a little friend. I haven't seen. I haven't seen my little friend, but I've seen traces of them. Um, occasionally when I'm a little bit sloppy and I leave some oats or uh, the latest victim was a box of uh, wheat crackers. Whenever I leave those things um, accessible, I wake up in the morning to nibbles out of said things or they're gone altogether and little black uh, rodent rodent poops kind of in, on, left on the scene of the crime and so I've got mice little m mousies are here which I'm I'm totally fine with um, mice 
exist and they're kind of like a bit of a bellwether you know like if you're being a bit messy um, you're gonna notice mice traces of mouse and if you don't want that just be tidier um, people go to war against mice and they just need to like murder all the mice and I say live and let live. Um, I am pro mouse. I mean, I'm not super pro mouse. I don't want pet mice. I don't want them crawling on me. But they're just so reclusive, and they're they're opportunists. They'll eat what they can get to. So just don't like, don't be silly with um, with food. That's my mouse story. Um, yeah, basement, tidy, nice, sorting things slowly. So, um, the Detroit Land Bank has just recently um, announced a revision to its side lot policy. Let's go outside and talk about this. Um, and before you had to like live directly adjacent to a side lot to be able to buy it. And they've changed that now to anyone within 500 feet. So... Oh, there's a bunny rabbit. Hey, bunny rabbit. Psst, psst. See the bunny rabbit? We've got rabbits, we've got pheasants, we've got all sorts of cool animals growing in these like little interstitial wildernesses. It's wonderful. Anyway, uh, side lots. So anyone within 500 feet can, is now eligible to buy them. Not for the $100, but for $250, which is still practically free. So this side lot that my truck is parked on and the one on the other side are now fair game to anyone within 500 feet. So any one of my shrewd neighbours could just snap them up, which has got me like nauseous with anxiety. I'm like, oh God, that's one of the main reasons I bought this house was because of the availability of the lots on either side. So, um, I've spoken to my compliance officer. He's given me the lowdown, the minimum I need to be compliant, which is what I need in order to like buy the lots myself. I'm not compliant at the moment, so I'm kind of vulnerable in a vulnerable position right now. So I've spoken to him. He's given me the, um, the LD, and I am expecting a call this morning from a plumber that I. Um, whose contact I got a while ago um, off this uh, young lady at a bar. She said, this is my plumber, he's fantastic. She's rehabbed a house as well. And this bloke John, so I'm expecting to uh, um, hear from him. And yeah, I sent him a text and said, this is what I want, can you help? And he texted back a few hours later and said, yeah, I think I can help. Um, let's have a chat tomorrow morning. So looking forward to speaking with John. The main thing I need to do, to get John to do, is, I'll show you, let's have a little look. What I need is this hot water unit commissioned, hooked up to gas, hooked up to water, pumping hot water through the house. In order to do that, I need to run black steel gas line from hot water unit, probably along the beam, just somewhere around here and then we'll offset across to one of our two um, so these are where the old gas meters were connected I was cleaning up the old gas meters just rusty old pipes and stuff on the side of the house the other day with my new grinder um, quick sorry this is just a little tangent here um, I'll get back to the plumbing and John stuff in a sec but it's a few weeks ago I was cleaning up outside a bunch of old rusty pipes thought I'd make it easier for the plumber and gas people to like hook up my um, gas so I was just like cutting all this stuff off the side of the house it was all in the way it looked like crap and then I cut through this one bit and then all of a sudden I hear a and I smell a gassy smell and I'm like Oh shit, I've cut through my like gas main, like my main feed. And it was just like gaping open and just like whoosh, gas was pouring out. So I had a total cow and I 
put my grinder wheel away, quick smart, um, try and avoid the chance of anything sparking and, sparking and igniting this like torrent of um, natural gas that was like pouring out of this pipe. Called DT, the power, the energy company, they came out, or there was one guy, he came out, he was just like, can you smell gas? And I was like, yes, I can definitely smell it. I can definitely hear it. I can see it. I know exactly. He was like, oh shit, uh, we need to get a crew out here. So they brought a whole crew, giant truck, excavator, dug up sidewalk, had to like put new main in. I was, I was like, I'm really sorry guys. And they were like, yeah, whatever, man, it's, we got to do it. So they were totally chill about it. Didn't cost me a cent. And now I've got a nice tidy new um, gas main feed. So anyway, I need to run gas to hot water unit. Then this is a super special uh, clever hot water unit. It can heat the water like super hot and keep it hot super efficiently. The super hot water that comes out of there is going to be used for building heat. So it's going to be part of my central heating system. I need to install one or two baseboards like these he heating units. I was going to do underfloor radiant heating and I still might do that in some areas. But um, in the interest of, of expediency, I'm going to just going to put it in a couple of baseboards. They're relatively cheap. They're very eff effective and efficient. And it'll get me across the line in terms, of the com in terms of the central heating requirement of compliance. So yeah, I need to do that. And then I need to finish off the bathroom upstairs. Not completely finish it, but I need to have a toilet and a sink in there. Which gives me extra time to like make the shower good and work on the shower but once I get hot water going I want to have a shower as soon as possible so um, there's only so long you can wash yourself out of a bucket with a rag which is going okay I've also got access to other showers one of the houses I manage is vacant so I can use the laundry and shower there which is nice um, but yeah having my own shower and stuff can be good so yeah hear from John, see what he says, going to get an estimate from him, and then we'll take it from there. But, um, yeah, I'm extra panicky now, so it's going to be okay. Um, that's about it, I think. Everything's cool. I'm settled into life here. I had a dream the other night that I had moved into um, a semi-abandoned house. I had this beautiful, exciting dream that I was, like, living in this kind of house under construction, and everything was, like kind of wild and crazy and then I woke up and it was my reality it was like oh this it's weird like it was that was an actual dream I had it was funny um I can't remember if I was moving out of this place into it yeah anyway it's um oh here's another just one last thing um my el electrical panel I'm incredibly proud of how neat I'm keeping things so there's all my like labels for where things are going I actually need to like tag each of these. These are my like hot, these are my hots. So I've got four live circuits in the house right now. Space for many more. Um, but yeah, I'm loving it. Electrical I'm quite enjoying and getting better at it. And it's just, yeah, mm, wire, it's nice. Can't remember if I showed you my fork last time, but here's my fork that I made. I moved in, realized I didn't have a fork, so I made myself a fork, and I love this little guy. Um, that is about it. I need to use the bathroom, and yeah, we've gone on a bit. So, thanks once again. Much love, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.